It's corn bread. Hello and welcome to this episode of Bake It Up a Notch, where we are diving into one of my favorite things in the entire world: cornbread. I love cornbread so much that there are nine varieties of cornbread in my new book, Savory Baking, because I couldn't pick just one. In this episode, we're actually going to show a little bit of the versatility of a base recipe like this. So I've got a few different recipes, but I'm also going to show you how to tweak them just a little bit to make an entirely new one. I'm so excited to get going, so let's get baking. One of my favorite things about cornbread is how easy it is to make. We're talking weeknight friendly. Yeah, you want some cornbread on the side of your soup or stew or chili? It could be done as quickly as the main meal itself is, and that's what's so great about it. We don't even need a mixer. We're just going to mix it together all in one bowl. So I'm going to start with some melted butter. Now, this first cornbread we're going to do, I call my classic cornbread. And for those of you cornbread purists out there, please hang on. If you see the ingredients that are about to be in this, and you're thinking that's not classic cornbread. I know. I've got a lot of cornbreads that I want to show you. So just hang on. I call this one classic because it sort of hits all the points that I like, and it's sort of a nice middleman of a cornbread. <laughs> Does that make sense? It sort of like has a little bit of sweetness, but only a little bit if you're not someone who likes sweet cornbread. And it also has a little bit of fluffiness and lightness. But if you like a denser cornbread, I've got you covered too. So just hang on with me as we start this first classic cornbread. It starts with a little bit of butter. Okay, it took long enough to pour that that I think we can say it's not a little bit of butter, but it starts with some butter. I'm also going to add some oil. Now we talked about this a tiny bit in our sheet cake episode just recently. But sometimes I like to use a combination of oil and butter because I get the flavor from the butter, but I get that added moistness from the oil. The oil is really good at retaining that moisture, which is really nice for something that has a tendency to go dry if you bake it a little too long. So in there, I've got my butter and my oil. I'm going to add a little bit of brown sugar. Now, you can absolutely leave this out if you are somebody that does not like sweet cornbread. I hear you. I have some friends. Who vehemently believe that?、Um, I like to add this little bit of brown sugar for a few reasons. Corn itself is sweet, and adding a little bit of sugar really brings out some of the flavor of the corn naturally. But in addition to that, it's also going to help keep this quick bread more moist. So unless you think you're going to eat all of this corn bread in one sitting, which honestly I definitely could, having that little bit of sugar is going to keep it. Nice and moist for your second time eating it, your third time eating it, and it's not necessarily going to dry out on you. So it's not really the creaming method or anything because it's only a few tablespoons of brown sugar. We're just really mixing to combine. Next, we're going to add an egg. Got one large egg. It's been at room temperature. Going to add that in there. Set that aside for one moment. And let's whisk together our dry ingredients. I've got my cornmeal, of course. I've got some flour. I've got some baking powder, and also some fine sea salt. I'm going to give that a quick whisk just to distribute these ingredients. And now I'm just going to go ahead and add those into my cornbread mixture. I just made a mistake. It happens. Sometimes we make mistakes. So, like a lot of quick bread or cake recipes, it can be helpful to add the dry ingredients gradually and alternate them with the liquid in the recipe, which in this case is some buttermilk. I went ahead and dumped all the dry ingredients in, and I did it on purpose just to show you this, <laughs> which is that it can get kind of clumpy and like not mix as easily and really get stuck in our whisk. If I had only added half of the mixture, this is funny. Um, if I'd only added half of the mixture, it would have mixed together much easier. But what I'm going to do now is get this back in my bowl, and I'll add the buttermilk. This is definitely a mistake that we can recover from, but 
there is a reason that the recipe says to add it in increments, and it's just because it makes the mixing actually go even faster and easier. So I'll go ahead and add some of this, mix that together, and then I'll add the rest. Alternating liquid and dry ingredients also helps prevent clumps from forming, which is especially good in a recipe like this that uses cornmeal, which is already sort of prone to clumping up inside the batter. Add the rest of that buttermilk. And even though I added things in slightly a wrong order here, this cornbread's still gonna turn out great. That's how easy cornbread really is. And that's it. We just made the cornbread batter. That's all we have to do to it. So simple. And it's so simple, in fact, that it is perfect for mixing up, for baking up a notch, or maybe even six to eight notches, <laughs> because we have a lot of different variations I wanna show you of how to make this cornbread extra special. But first, let's pour this one into a greased eight by eight pan. If you only have a nine by nine pan, that's gonna work here great too. Just remember, it's gonna be a little bit of a thinner cornbread, and it might take a little less time to bake. This is a really adaptable recipe though. You can bake it in a cake pan, a round cake pan. You could bake it in an oven safe skillet. We're actually gonna talk about baking it in a cast iron skillet a little bit later. Okay, so I lightly grease this. You can also opt to line this with parchment paper and it's gonna brown a little bit less, but I kind of like it to have a little bit of a crispy crust action. I'm just encouraging it into the corners to make sure that the corners aren't thinner than the center of my batter. And then we're gonna go ahead and bake this at 400 degrees Fahrenheit until it has a little bit of golden browning happening at the edges and a toothpick or skewer inserted into the center comes out clean or with a few moist crumbs attached. So while this one is baking, let's talk about some of the ways we can bake it up a notch. One of the most fun ways to mix up your cornbread, customize it, make it your own, is by adding some inclusions. Inclusions is the fancy word we use in baking to basically say stuff you add to your dough or batter. So if you were making chocolate chip cookies, the chocolate chips would be the inclusions. And in this case, I wanna add some chilies and some garlic, maybe even some cheese to this classic cornbread and just kind of flavor it a little bit deeper. Other things you can add, of course, things like vegetables. Remember, if they have a high moisture content, something like zucchini, you might wanna saute them a little bit first, help remove some of that moisture. Also things that are so great to add, anything oniony, so scallions would be delicious. And of course, spices, herbs, really anything you've got in your pantry is a great way to just mix this up a little bit, add a little bit more flavor. So I'm adding, some cooked uh, green chilies. These are actually just canned hatch chilies. I really love those and they make a great addition to cornbread. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a good amount. I like chilies. Just gonna fold that in. I'm also gonna add some minced garlic. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of cheese right into the batter and then I think I'll save some to also put on the top. So inclusions are one way you can mix this up. And another really simple way is just by changing the pan. I already mentioned that this is a pretty versatile recipe in terms of being able to use slightly different sizes of pans, just adjusting the bake time a little bit. But by baking in a cast iron skillet, we're actually gonna get a little bit more of a crust on the sides and base of this cornbread. It's gonna brown a little bit more and it just is a really nice textural contrast. So I'm gonna bake my cornbread with inclusions in this, but you could bake any of the cornbread recipes in this episode in a skillet to achieve the same result. Just gonna spread this into a nice even layer in my greased cast iron. And then I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more cheese on top, cause why not? So let's go ahead and bake this until that cheese gets melty. It'll even get browned and crusty a little bit too. And the same kind of doneness indicators we're looking for. It's gonna take the same amount of time in the cast iron skillet. It's just the cast iron is gonna do that work, browning it more as it goes along. There's a reason I refer to my other cornbread recipe as classic, because this one I like to refer to as traditional. And what I mean by that is traditional cornbread recipes don't have all-purpose flour in them typically. They're made with 100% cornmeal. And I was uh, always sort of hesitant to give this a try from the standpoint of as much as I love cornmeal, I also really like that light fluffy texture that all-purpose flour brings. 
But boy, was I wrong. The most incredible thing about a cornbread made with all cornmeal is the flavor. It has such a pure corn flavor. It's really, really incredible. It allows that cornmeal to really, really sing through, really shine. And in addition, it is a slightly denser cornbread, but that doesn't equate to it being less moist. It doesn't equate to it being any less, um, you know, delicious. It's just a little bit of a denser, more crumbly, final crumb structure. So I went ahead and made one recipe here and I just wanted to show you what it looks like. You can see already that it's a little bit shorter than our classic cornbread is going to be when it comes out of the oven. And you can see what I mean, even when I run my finger along it, I'm having some crumbs fall down, but it is just so delicious, so beautiful golden yellow. And because it's 100% cornmeal, it's also naturally gluten-free. So this is an amazing recipe to have kind of in your back pocket. Best of all, you can make this really simply just by eliminating the all-purpose flour, upping the cornmeal and upping the buttermilk because when we're using pure cornmeal, it's going to absorb more moisture. So it's really important that we also add a little more buttermilk to it to make sure that we still end up with this nice, good texture. I can't resist it, I have to take a bite. This cornbread is so corny. <laughs> that denseness, this is gonna be perfect for dipping. This would be perfect with a little bit of butter and a drizzle of honey. There are so many amazing ways you can enjoy this. And best of all, it's even easier to make, uses even less ingredients, and it's 100% gluten-free. A cornbread for everyone. All right, let's move on from sort of the classic world of basic cornbread into another category that deserves a moment all its own, the perfect corn muffin. I love corn muffins. And could you just take the classic or gluten-free cornbread and put it into a muffin pan and bake it? Absolutely, and it would be delicious. However, I did make some formulation changes to make my perfect ideal corn muffin in my new book, Savory Baking, and this is it. The main difference that you can see when I'm stirring it here, it has a higher ratio of fat, so you can see it's actually a little bit thinner and more fluid than the other corn uh, bread. The other addition is I always like to put corn kernels in it. I leave this as optional in the recipe. You certainly don't have to, but I love to add them to give that little bit of speckle of color when you bite into the corn muffin and also for just that little extra burst of sweetness. So I'm gonna fold in my corn kernels. Even though the ratio is slightly different, there's a little bit more fat in here, those kinds of things. Otherwise, mixing it is exactly the same. So the only difference really is that we're going to bake it in a muffin pan. I'm gonna grab my handy dandy scoop. This is a quarter cup scoop. I'm gonna do a heaping quarter cup in each. And while we're scooping these muffins, let's go ahead and talk about one of the ways we can bake these muffins up a notch. I'm gonna make six of these as just regular, beautiful corn muffins. And then the other ones I'm going to make a little cheesy. And I'm going to take a one inch cube of cheddar cheese. And I am going to press that into the center. Now it's really important when you press this in that you don't press all the way down to the bottom because that's where it's gonna meet contact with the pan and it's gonna wanna really crust up there, might be more prone to sticking. We just wanna push it down until we kind of don't feel any more resistance. That's how we know we're almost about to reach the bottom of the pan. And then I'm just gonna scoop a little more batter on top of each one to cover up my little cheese cube. And oh, the cheese pull that awaits us on the other side of this. It's going to be such a thing of beauty. In the savory baking book, you can see, I love that picture. We have a big old cheese pull. Insert photo here. Okay, we're gonna start these muffins at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's gonna help with that initial oven spring that's going to help give them that nice mounded muffin look. 
Then we're gonna lower the temperature to 375 for the remainder of baking until a toothpick in the center comes out clean or with a few moist crumbs. It's a little bit harder to determine the doneness on these cheese filled ones. So look for the same doming and look for a nice little golden brown edge around the outside. Into the oven they go. I ask you, what is the difference between a quick bread and a cake? I'll tell you, adding frosting. That's really the only difference. A lot of quick bread recipes are lower in sugar, and I really do like making my corn muffin recipe as a loaf, like as a quick bread like this in a regular loaf pan. And suddenly, it's pretty much just a corn muffin cake. And to just kind of take it to that cake place even more, I'm just gonna add a little bit of an icing. And what I wanna do with this is I'm gonna add a whole layer of icing on the top, let it drip down the sides, and then let it firm up. After it sets at room temperature for a little while, we'll be able to slice right through it and that icing is gonna stay exactly where we put it. Good excuse to go icing heavy. I mean, this is my savory baking book, but my savory baking book is full of sweet tooth breaks like this because that's how we all are in real life. We're making dinner, but we're thinking about dessert just a little bit. Nice thick icing. This icing is just made with powdered sugar. I have a cup of powdered sugar and enough cream and a little splash of vanilla. You can also use milk. You can use water to make an icing like this. When it's made with water, it's often called flat icing. Making it with milk makes it a little bit sweeter and making it with cream makes it a little bit richer and it's delicious. And then see, it already starts to firm up a little bit while I'm working with it so I can even drag the back of my spoon through it and make it a little wavy and swoopy and mmm, mmm. The hardest part about this is gonna be waiting for the icing to set. I'll take it away for now and we'll slice into it later. Let's take this to the sweetest place yet. In my book, Savory Baking, I have one variation called Even Sweeter Cornbread. And that's because I know a lot of people don't like a sweeter cornbread, but then again, let's think of it more like a cake. And I use the sweetest version that has the most buttery goodness also to make this, my iced corn coffee cake. It's just as easy to make as a basic cornbread, but then you make a classic streusel, sprinkle it all over the surface, and then add a drizzle of icing over the top as well. Now you can do this icing in two different ways. You can use a thinner icing or apply it while the cake is still slightly warm, and it's going to cover the outside a little bit more like a glaze. But if you want that icing to be visible in big, thick stripes, let it cool down completely and use a thicker icing. You can use the same kind of icing that I used on our loaf cake before as well. And this is just gonna have that added textural wonder of the crunchy crispy streusel, a little bit of extra butteriness. It's just so wonderful. So I'm going to just use a spoon to make some big, thick icing drizzles over the top here. And I'll let this set up too. It'll make it a little bit easier to slice. But I love to serve something like this um, for a brunch or a breakfast. I mean, it makes a great dessert too for anyone who really loves coffee cake. And if you wanna go really crazy, add some blueberries in this in the summer, add some chocolate even, nuts. So you can really treat this just like a classic snacking cake or coffee cake, and it can become a lot of different things. Mm. I'm gonna go ahead and make this extra perfect because this is Bake It Up a Notch. Let's let it set before I slice it and we'll cut into it soon. Any of these cornbread recipes can really benefit from a baste with butter. Butter basting can help promote even browning, but of course it also just adds killer flavor. Now there are three major points in a recipe where I would consider butter basting. If you want to, you can do all three of these, and if not, you can consider just doing one 
or maybe even two of them, depending on how buttery you like your final baked good. So the first time I like to butter baste is before it goes into the oven. You can just apply a little bit of butter right to the surface. And again, that's gonna help it with its initial browning and all of those things. Another point that is good is about halfway through baking. This is going to help keep the browning even if it started to kind of maybe brown more at the edges than in the center. So what you can do is at the point you would normally rotate the pan, remove it from the oven, give it a quick brush with butter, and then return it to the oven while rotating it. And then the final time that you can do it is right when it comes out of the oven. And this is actually my favorite. I like to butter baste biscuits this way. I like to do a lot of different baked goods this way. And I'm just gonna give some of these muffins a little bit of a final baste with some butter. Now, I've actually flavored this butter and that's another reason I really love butter basting is because you can use the butter as another vehicle to add additional flavor to the recipe. So I added a little bit of honey to this butter. So this is kind of a honey butter and you can use other sweet things like maple syrup or brown sugar, but you can also go the savory route with some garlic or some spices, some herbs anything like that, even just salt and black pepper is a really delicious thing to add to any kind of butter you're using as a base. I would use one stick, a half a cup, 113 grams of butter for a full recipe if I was going to baste it all three times. If you're only gonna baste it once, you'll just need a few tablespoons. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Bake It Up a Notch, where we talked about one of my favorite baked goods of all time, cornbread. Cornbread is so adaptable and there are so many ways to make it your own. I hope this episode really inspires you to try some tweaks of your own. And if it does, please use hashtag Bake It Up a Notch because I love to see all the things that you're baking in your own kitchens. As always, all of these delicious recipes are linked in the video description below, so go down there for all of the deliciousness. If you love cornbread, please be sure to click like and subscribe so you can be made aware of all of our new episodes as they become available. And our next episode has an extremely special guest, and we're gonna be making biscuits and gravy. And I can't wait. Until then, I'm gonna eat some cornbread and just say, happy baking and have a corntastic day. <laughs>